So after two pulsating semi-finals, we now know the finalists of the 2019 UEFA Nations League. And I'll tell you about it next. <laughs> That's right folks, back once again with another video, this time taking a look at the final of the 2019 Nations League. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe button to get your bang up to date. With all things Nations League related, Club and Rovers related, whoa, football related, we're going to all here under one roof. So yes, boys and girls, what a couple of semi-finals we had, folks. Plenty of goals to talk about, but we only have two winners, and we'll get to that in just a second. So just one quick couple of little, uh, little bits and pieces for you. So just let you know that I am on Patreon, boys and girls, if you want to support the channel in another way besides your viewership, head over to the old link in the old description down below. It is on the screen, hopefully behind me or in front of me. Uh, so make sure you head over there uh, and explore the page. There are three tiers of support that you could, uh, uh, you know, throw to Towards the channel and help us push up uh, the content uh, in another way. And speaking of pushing the content in another way, I am going to be live on Twitch starting Monday, the 10th of June, uh, predicting the outcomes of three international tournaments, starting with the Gold Cup, uh, then the old Cup of America kicks off, and then African Cup of Nations comes off. So we are going to be predicting all these games live over on Twitch, starting with Match Day 1, Part 1 of the Gold Cup, and that is on Monday. Uh, head over there. I will talk more about that a little bit later, later on. But anyway, let's get cracking and take a little look at the Nations League final. That's what we're here for. So, uh, yes, what a couple of little bad boys we got on our hands today. But let's see how they got there in the first case. So if you have seen the, the initial video of the Nations League semi-finals, I did go over this, but I'm going to blitz through it quickly, obviously. Uh, here we go. The Netherlands got here via Group 1, topping it. Uh, just the one defeat on their cards. Uh, they ousted France and Germany along the way. Into Group uh, 2, uh, was Switzerland. They came out on top of that one. Obviously, they, they uh, we'll talk more about their destiny a little bit later. So they came out on top, just the one defeat as well, uh, in a group that included Belgium and Iceland. Uh, the other finalists, uh, Portugal, that's right, they top group three, yet to lose uh, yet to lose a game. Uh, two wins, two draws in the group stages, and that also included Italy and Poland. And of course, group four, it was England who ousted Spain and Croatia along the way. So let's get looking at those semi-finals, folks. And what a couple of belters we had on our hands indeed. So Portugal took on Switzerland in the opener. And that was a lot of goal. It was very nervy. It was, it was you know, edge of the seat stuff sort of sort of thing. Um, in fact, Switzerland looked a very decent side and they could have gone on and won it, the, won it themselves. But they didn't. They failed. They actually came out to a 3-1 loss. Portugal winning it with a superb hat trick from one of the best players in the world, Cristiano Ronaldo. And you never know what, you never, guess what, folks? I got that one bang on the flipping nose. That's right, I called it, folks. 3-1 in the end for Portugal. Yep, I know I had my doubters out there, but come on, I am the prediction king. Uh, that is right. Moving over to the next one, which was on, uh, what day is it now? It was on Thursday. Uh, and that ended up as a 3-1 victory as well for Netherlands. Going into extra time, um, I actually saw it was a 3-2 victory for the Dutch. Um, so not too shabby indeed. Just one goal shy out of both, uh, both of those matches. And there's a little uh, emoji just to sim just to signify what I got out of that one. I got a big fat gold star for the first one. And I got a bit of a semi-happy face for the next one. So we're moving on over to the next games now. Obviously, it's the third and fourth playoff. It's the dead rubber. Nobody really wants to play this game. But there is prize money at stake. So each nation, each football association will want to do their best. You never know, because these, these are going to fund uh, hotels and shit for the VIPs. Of course, they want England and Switzerland to do well. So this game will take place on the 9th of June, uh, 2 o'clock kickoff, Central European time, over in Guadamares, over in Portugal. Uh, the record between the two sides look like this. They've played each other 26 times in all competitions. England wins 17 of them. They've drawn six between them, and the Swiss have picked up three victories along the way. Uh, how about the last three results? Well, here they are. It's all all smiles for England uh, in the last three. They've or three victories out of three. Obviously, the, the last one was a 1-0 victory for England, uh, 26th of March, 2018. If you go back a few years to 2013, England also picked up a 2-0 victory over the Swiss. And then all the way back to 2012 as well, another 2-0 victory for England. So it looks like it's it's all heavily in favour of England. But will they really give a flying banana skin for this one? Do they want to be there? It's been a long old season for the players like Kane, Henderson and the like. Uh, but will they, will they really want to be there? Will they step it up? Well, the bookmakers think that they will. They are actually 21 to 20 uh, as it stands on the odds over at WilliamHill.com. So uh, they fancy England. The record says England. What do I think? Well, I'm actually going to go in favour of England. That's right. A 2-0 victory for England. 
I can't really bat against all those stats. It's heavily favoured against England. So if the Swiss do pick up a victory, it will be a massive, massive surprise. Um, but for me, I, I, I can't see anything but an England victory to take home the bronze medal and a couple of million uh, euros uh, along the way. But anyway, let's kick it on to the final. This is the one that we really want to talk about. is Portugal up against the Dutch. Now, what uh, this game will take place on the 9th of June, 7.45 local time out in Porto. And that's the key factor for me. Porto is the location. Portugal do have an unfair advantage. Obviously, they were dedicated as hosts, so that does give them a bit of edge on this one. Uh, well, the bookmakers, uh, they think uh, this at the moment. We'll talk more about that in a minute. I've actually brought that graphic up a little bit early. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at the record between the two sides. It actually favours the, the Portuguese as well. They played each other 14 times uh, with them winning seven of them. The Dutch winning just two. And it's been five draws along the way. But the last three results look like this. Uh, most recently, the Dutch picked up a 3-0 victory over Portugal. Uh, that's back in 26th of March 2018, just one year ago. Uh, before that, it was a 1-1 draw uh, back in, over a like in Portugal, perhaps, but that was back in 2013. And all the way back in 2012, Portugal picked up a 2-1 victory over the Dutch as well. So it is very even, you know, it, obviously in Netherlands more most recently. Um, and they do have one of the two of the hottest prospects in, in defence, uh, De Ligt and Van Dijk. And they've been turning, turning a few heads as well. Obviously Van Dijk now Champions League winner and all that kind of good stuff. So yes, it, the, the, again, when you look at it, it's it's it does... It, it does seem to favour Portugal. The odds... Um, what are the bookmakers? The bookmakers do think Portugal are the favourites here. We're 29, 29 to 20 um, favoured in, in favour of the Dutch. Um, and I, I, I like it upset every now and again. I do like to see uh, uh, some of the bigger boys uh, coming out. or t Some of the bigger boys getting an upset. But for me, I cannot see it in this one. I'm actually going to go with a 2-1 victory for Portugal. We cannot deny them with the home form. Uh, and I think they'll just have the edge. And again, a couple key players for the Dutch played a few games longer, um, and I just, I just don't see, I just don't see them uh, stepping up a gear and, and taking it. Now, I did actually think that the winner of this Nations League would get, have a guaranteed shot or guarantee, guaranteed progression to the to the Euro, Euro 2020. That is not the case. That is not the case. No, it, they have to go through either the qualification process or via some playoffs, some hoodoo. Uh, over there. But anyway, Portugal should come out on top here for me. 2-1 victory on the 9th of June. And that will wrap up the first ever Nations League. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the thumbs up. But if you do, smash the subscribe. I try and bring you new videos each and every day in some capacity. And I also want to let you know that I'm going to be live over on Twitch throughout the month of June. Kicking off Monday the 10th. Uh, we'll be taking a look at live, live on Twitch, Gold Cup predictions for match day one for groups A and B. And then we'll kick it on further to match day one for group C and D. And then all the way through into the African Cup of Nations. So it's going to be a very, very busy month over on Twitch. I hope to uh, repost the videos here on YouTube, but you won't have that interactive element where you can uh, give your own opinion live on the channel. So uh, that I want, if you want to join me, Monday the 10th, I am going to be live 7 a.m. Eastern time. That is America time over here in Pennsylvania. That is 12 o'clock noon in England, uh, 1 o'clock if you're in Europe, Central European time. That kind of stuff. It should be on the graphic there, the the, the key, some of the key times. Um, yeah, so that's going to be a busy old month. Also, make sure to check out the old description. Links to my other social media platforms in there. Twitter, Facebook, and of course, the hotly released uh, Patreon boys. That's right. I am looking for Patreons. Uh, it does help with the channel's development. We are trying to kick on forward over the 10,000 subscriber mark. Hopefully, in the next couple of days, uh, we'll, we'll break that, break that uh, deadlock and get over that hump. And then we can look forward to the next 10K, boys and girls. I hope to have you with me and hopefully... With some additional support, we can push the channel a bit further, increase the content. I've got a lot of plans for next season domestically. And I've actually got more plans two seasons from now. So that's, you know, I'm a bit of a snooker player, a bit of a Stephen Hendry, Ronnie O'Sullivan. I'm thinking about four, four shots ahead. So, uh, yeah, lots to think about, lots to get excited about right here on the channel. And hopefully that includes you. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I've got for you. Hopefully I'll see you live on Monday. In the meantime, you can check out me uh, on the YouTube sphere uh, probably tomorrow. If not, you'll see Cast the Cat. She's predicting her, her results for these three major tournaments in the next few days. So they'll be live as well. So lots to get excited to. Until then, thumbs up, subscribe. Come on, somebody in the old Nations League. Who are you calling for? Stick your own comments down in the old section down there below. Yo! If you're looking for some more great Gold Cup content, why don't you join me for one of my live sessions over on Twitch. Details to that sucker in the old description down below. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date. All things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, 
football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope. <laughs>